Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video we are going to solve one example regarding how to calculate the anchorage length in a cantilever slab connected to a wall. And we will see from where we need to define the anchorage length. Let's do it. Assume we have a cantilever slab which is connected to a concrete wall. The wall thickness is 300 millimeter with the nominal cover of 30 millimeter or with the nominal cover of 35 millimeter. And the slab is with nominal cover of 25 millimeter. The slab is reinforced by primary reinforcement of T16 to 150, meaning that every 250 millimeter we have one T16 and it has 25 millimeter cover. Also, we can see in the figure that we have secondary reinforcement below the top primary reinforcement and the idea of this example is to calculate what is the anchorage length first of all we need to understand where do we have the maximum tension so to start let's have the uh, assumption for this example assume that the concrete class for wall and the slab is c3037 uh, AH500 as reinforcement, meaning that FY is 500 megapascal. Then the slab thickness 180 millimeter and the wall thickness is 300 millimeter. C nominal for a slab is 25 millimeter and c nominal for the wall is 35 millimeter so the idea is to calculate what is the required anchorage length and from where we have to calculate this anchorage length if we sketch the ideal beam of this question We can see that it's a cantilever with the length of L under the load Q. And if we sketch the bending moment diagram, bending moment at point uh, at uh, support is negative and at the end it's zero. As a result, the maximum tension would occur in the support and the bending moment is negative. So if we come back to our original question, we can see that here we have the maximum negative bending moment. This maximum negative moment would uh, need to have a certain amount of reinforcement and we assume that the design value is T16K250. This example is not about calculating how many reinforcement do we need. The example is about the anchorage length. As a result, the connection to the wall seems to be under the maximum tension. If we zoom in in the corner, so here, this is going to be under maximum tension. As a traditional belief, we know that the cover of the wall is not effective in terms of taking any load. As a result, practically, we assume that the point that we have the vertical reinforcement is the effective point. So it means that instead of the 
face of the wall, we assume the connection of the reinforcement in a slab with the reinforcement, vertical reinforcement of the wall is the point of being effective. So effective point. And from here, we calculate what is the required anchorage length. So this would be determined from here in the center line. This is the anchorage length that we need to calculate and support it through the wall. So as, as far as it's a slab, so the spacing is 250, but the first one, which is connected to the edge of the wall and the edge of the slab has a little bit bigger. Usually it's a little bit bigger uh, cover. And we assume in this example that that cover is, for example, 60 millimeter. So the starting uh, of the slab, the reinforcement inside the slab is 60 millimeter away from the base of the slab in each end. So now what do we need to do? We need to calculate LB required first. And we had another video regarding how to calculate the required anchorage length so lb required is t divided by 4 times sigma st divided by fbd we want to have a full strength of rebar is ensured as a result sigma st is going to be fyd it means that if the reinforcement is under the maximum stress that it can withstand then it has enough anchorage length so fyd is fy divided by gamma s 500 megapascal divided by 1.15 which is 435 megapascal then we need to Determine FBD, which was 225 eta 1 eta 2 times FCTD. And FCTD can be calculated according to the given equation in chapter 3 alpha CT times FCTA005 divided by gamma C. Alpha CT is usually 1. FCTK 0.05. You can find it in the table 31 from Eurocode, which is 2 megapascal for C3037 and then divided by 1.5. So it is 1.33 megapascal. As far as phi is 16 millimeter and it's less than 32 millimeter. So eta 2 will be 1. For eta 1, we have a 180 millimeter thickness as a result and also it is bent at 90 degrees. So we can assume that it's a good bond. But in practice, we assume always all the reinforcement on the top are in a poor condition. So it's uh, in a safe side. We can assume that it's poor condition even though we know that in this example for example we can go with eta 1 to be 1 but we go with eta 1 0 0.7 as a result fbd can be calculated according to 2.25 0 0.7 and 1.33 so 2.1 megapascal then we can substitute the values to LB required, which is 16 divided by 4 times 435 megapascal divided by 2.5 megapascal, which is 828 millimeter, or let's say 830 millimeter. This is the basic required length. We can provide this length or we can 
multiply by the uh, factors for alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4, and alpha 5. Usually in this case, we do not have confinement properly to be provided. As a result, alpha 3, 4, 5 can be taken as 1. And for alpha 1, we can use the table we had earlier in the other example. And also CD. So here we are talking about this uh, case B in year A3. And C1. In our case is 60 millimeter. A is the clear distance between two reinforcements which are bent. So 250 millimeter is the center to center spacing of the reinforcement minus one diameter, which is 16 millimeter. And we can multiply by 1.1 considering the effect of the ribs. So then it will be 250 minus 17.6, 232.4. So here, CD will be minimum of 232.4 divided by 2 and 60 millimeter, which in this case it is 60 millimeter. Then we can go through the table for the shape of the bar, alpha 1, it is not a straight, it is other than a straight, alpha 1 can be calculated to be 0 0.7 if CD is greater than 3 times V. So alpha 1 will be 0 0.7 if CD, which is 60 millimeter, is greater or equal or greater than 3 times 16 millimeter. This is valid and we can take alpha 1 as 0 0.7. Also, from concrete cover, it is not a straight. As a result, we can go with this second equation. Alpha 2 is 1 minus 0 0.15 times CD, which is 60 millimeter, minus 3 times 16 millimeter, divided by 16 millimeter. And it's 0 0.89. It should be greater than 0 0.7. It is. It should be less than 1. It is. If it is greater than 1, we need to take it as 1. If it's less than 0 0.7, we need to take it as 0 0.7. So the other factors can be taken as uh, 1, alpha 3, alpha 4, alpha 5. We take them as 1. And now we can calculate what is LED. Alpha 1, Alpha 2, Alpha 3, Alpha 4, Alpha 5, and then LB required. And it should be greater than LB minimum. So here, substituting the factors, 0 0.7, 0 0.89, 1, 1, 1. And we need to check alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 5 to be greater than 0 0.7. This is valid. And LV required, we calculated and it was 830 millimeter. LV minimum intention is the maximum of 30% of LV required. And NP and 100 millimeter. 160 millimeter, 30% of 830 is 249 millimeter. So LBD then is 70%, 89%, 830. So it is 517 millimeter and it should be greater than 249 millimeter. That is fine. So we can just round 570 to the next 50 millimeter, 550. So 
so 550 millimeter is the length that we need to consider so in other words if we bring the picture from here so the distance from the point of effective point up to here should be at least 550 millimeter that's at the end of this example in the next example we go through the calculation of anchorage length in a concrete foundation well at the end we calculated the anchorage length of uh, p16 connected to a concrete wall for a slab which was 180 millimeter and we determined how it should be anchored and from where we need to calculate the anchorage length I hope it was useful for you and see you in next video. Thank you. Bye.